So welcome back to the second part of this HTML tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to use color within our style tags and you can see it here by when we use the word color and it's the American spelling of color so that's C-O-L-O-R it allows us to change the color to whatever we want. Now we can set it up in our style tag just like this and then every time we apply the heading one tag it will be that color. You can do things individually if you like but you know you can always have it in your style tags. The other tag we're going to look at is span. Now the span tag allows us to... The span element is designed to group some text within a paragraph to apply a style to it. It doesn't really do anything on its own. Now I can set up certain words to have that span text and in this case I chose the color green and I set that up in my style tag and then every time I call upon the span tags the color will change accordingly. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to add some color to the paragraph tag. Now I've set my paragraph tags to a maximum width of 150 and I've set the, the background color to blue. This basically means that there will be a box of color around the paragraph tag. Now you can set it to, if you set it to auto or 100%, it will take up the whole screen. It is only 150 pixels from the side of the screen where I have uh, all the information over there. The next thing we're going to look at is links. Now to do links in HTML, you need a few things. You need the actual, the complete URL of the link and I'll start with the protocol, so HTTP and then uh, I put the link in which is google.com and then you need the text which actually appears on the website and if you click on that link it will take you to google.com So now we have a look at how to put images inside of our web page. Now you do this using the IMG SRC tag. Now I've already got a Bob the Builder picture in my images folder on my computer and then therefore I can always call upon it. Now I can set the width and height to anything that I like but there are certain dimensions to the image that it already has. Now there's a formula that you need to know to find or to find the scale height and the scale width. If you don't apply the formula, then the image is going to look very skewed and it's not going to look good at all. So the formula is the scaled width is equal to the original width times the scaled height over the original height. And it's the same for the scaled height. It's pretty much the formula in reverse. So the scaled height is equal to the original height times the scaled width uh, over the original width. So you need to know the resolution of the graphic firstly. And you can see from this uh, Bob the Builder uh, picture that I have, the original size was 450 by 683. Now that I've resized it properly using mathematics, it will fit nicely onto my webpage. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the second part of this tutorial and I will see you next time.